And welcome back to Let's Play Cave Story. Last time we defeated Curly, didn't take her machine gun, but we've got a dog with us now. What an amazing summary of events. I totally butchered that, but whatever. We're going along. These doors will not open yet. We have to fight a boss first. And there's actually an achievement for fighting that boss with the dog on your back, so... I already have it, but I mean, that's how you get that achievement. And I, it was, I got it by accident, actually, because I didn't even know it was an achievement. Because I always get this dog first when I, when I remember to. But, yeah. Here's another life capsule. It's like the fifth or sixth one we've got so far. And these, uh, sun guy things. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap! Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Eh. Ow! Well, that's a sand croc. If you fall in these sand pits, they will attack you violently. And I already, I lost a huge chunk of health for that too. But they won't go back down unless you shoot them. So if you do accidentally pull one out, just leave him alone and he won't do anything else unless you shoot him. I was about to say, these sun guys are kind of annoying because they split and break off into little smaller guys. Ah, oh, crap! Level 1 Polar Star, really? Oh jeez, not good. I'm gonna die. Oh jeez. I really, really need to get out of here. <laughs> I've never messed up this badly on this part. Okay, that thing needs to die first and foremost. There we go. Uh, I want my Polar Star back to level 3, please. And I need health quite badly. Uh, there is nothing worse than getting knocked back to a level 1 Polar Star. Destroy, destroy, destroy! Oh hey, I got it. To, I got my uh, missile launcher maxed out, apparently. Uh, collect hearts. Okay, we're good on health for now. Uh, I think the bubble is probably going to be my best choice of weapons for now, since I'm polar star is crap now. Okay. Um, destroy everything. Uh, that paw print up there means there's a secret area. And there's a save point in there that I'm going to try and get to. Because you probably noticed I've almost died on several occasions going through there. Whenever you see a paw print on a, on a tile like that, there's a secret area somewhere around that area. Um, and I always try to avoid going down into these, but I kind of need weapon power. Ow, what the hell? Because if, if you destroy too many of these, you can fall down into the sand, and we've established that that's bad. I usually just ignore most of these guys. But I really, really want my Polar Star to not be crap. And this should be enough to do it. Maybe? Of course not. No, should be able to get this guy. Oh, come on. Come back over here. Oh, jeez. Not good. Please die. Please die. Please die. Please die. Okay. Well, I've got health back. A large majority of my health back. So we're good on health. So let's take out this last guy so I can get back up to maximum weapon power for my Polar Star. Okay. I think we're good for now. And there's a health station here. And it's trying to trick you into a false sense of security because that one does have a sand croc in it. So... There are health and missiles... Yikes. Or maybe it's just health. In this row here. But be careful not to uh, break the one under those if you're not paying attention because they will fall on you and hurt you really badly. And I think that's everything. Okay. For this boss, I think the bubbler is a pretty good choice if it's maxed out. But apparently I lost some, some of that power. So I'm going to try and see if this guy will give me any... Um, just one? Yes, okay. We're good. We're good, we're good, we're good. You definitely want a level 3 bubbler for this. It will take him out in no time. 
That Balrog. He's blundered yet another time. Hmm. You have a lot of spirit. However, to come all the way here, you're a bit troublesome. You want to take me on? No, that doesn't happen until later in the game. Oh, it doesn't seem like it'll be necessary. Bye now. This is Omega! He spams projectiles a lot, but if you stand close to him and keep spamming the bubbler, he's pretty much a weakling. It might, it might take some time, but you can see I'm very consistently lowering his health down. And it also... Oops. I need to let my ammo regenerate. It also keeps his projectiles kind of off of you. And it destroys a lot of them so they turn into health and weapon power. So you're not really in all that much danger of getting downgraded. So this is this is one boss fight where the bubbler really comes in handy. And now that I, he's down to less than half health, he starts jumping around. So you can pretty much... You can keep using the bubbler, I like to, but you can pretty much switch to any other weapon. Ah, crap. Come on. Come on. Regenerate, regenerate, regenerate. Yeah. There is a item you can find later that makes your ammo regenerate faster. I think there is. I remember there being one. There we go. There's also one that makes you lose less uh, weapon power when you get hit by an enemy. I think that's called the arms barrier. That's a pretty dang useful thing too. Defeated Omega! The curse on the sunstones is lifted. Um, he didn't drop any weapon power for us though. Oh well. And I'm actually at maximum health. I didn't think I took all that much damage during that fight either. So let's just make our way back through here. And we can ignore these little sun guys because I don't need any more weapon power. Well, I, I could use some for my polar star actually, but I'm not going to risk my life to try and get it. Because that would just be stupid. There are certain things I'm willing to risk my life for, but weapon power for my polar star is not one of them when it's already level 3. Having it maxed out is nice and all, but yeah. And we can just jump along here. Destroying all of these blocks is generally not a good idea, because it puts it closer to the sand. You don't want to be in the sand, except that. Anyway, now this door opens. And we can go down. Uh, these crocodile skulls are really useful actually because they're slow and you can destroy them pretty easily and they almost always drop weapon power or hearts. This is Jenka's house. <clears throat> We're gonna save real quick and talk to the old lady. See how good an imitation of an old lady I could do. Oh, that's my doggy. Gave her the dog. You've returned him to me. <clears throat> Damn. That was very nice of you. She's, she's gonna sound like Professor Booster, unfortunately. What? The red flower? Oh, yeah! Hi, Balrog. Kool Aid guy. How you doing, Auntie? Oh, it's you, Balrog. You look good. How's my stupid daughter been lately? Huh. <laughs> stupid daughter? You mean misery? She's also fun. A new master has appeared. This time the surface will finally be ours. Are you two still trying to do that? I'm not here to cause you any trouble. I just came by to pick up the key to the warehouse. You know, the warehouse with the flower seeds. Huh. I have no idea what you're talking about, Balrog. Is that so? You're just pretending you don't know? I see you now. You're going to betray us then. Is that it? You'll be sorry. Mm, that's ominous. A new master. <clears throat> Damn. Why can I not do an old lady voice? It must be another idiot at it again. About my dogs. I have four more still. My little pups. But these legs of mine are so very weak. Sorry for the inconvenience, but would you mind finding the rest of my dogs for me? I am terrible at old lady voices, apparently. Yes, we want to save, and we have to go find... How many did she say there were? Four? Four left. Okay, I know exactly where all of them are. 
And I'm going to get them in order from least to most convenient. So that's going to involve going really far into the level and coming all the way back. But with each dog I find, I'll ha I won't have to go out as far. So there's that. This is the area in the game I hate the most. There are so many enemies, so much open space, and so many projectiles at any given time. It is just a complete annoyance in every sense of the word. But if you destroy the birds, then the skull things will fall down and they'll usually land below you. So you always want to try for the birds first. And then just stay up on these platforms. There's no sand crocs in the sand here, fortunately, because that would just be evil beyond measure. So if you just stay on the platforms though, you can get up here pretty easily. And there's some skeleton crocodile things here. Oh hey, I forgot my fireball was downgraded, but I can get it upgraded again pretty quickly because these guys tend to drop a lot of weapon power. So we're just gonna go all the way to the very end of sand zone and back. Yes, that's right, we're gonna go all the way down here, go all the way back. Because one of the dogs is all the way down here, and he's probably the least convenient to get. Oh geez. Okay. So we're gonna get him first. And then the next one we get will be, it'll be out here, but not all the way to the end of the level. It's just the way I like to do it. You can get him in any order, really. I just think it's more convenient to do it this way. I don't know if it actually saves any amount of time whatsoever. Uh, this part's always annoying. This is a good place to have the missile, actually. Because it does splash damage, so it'll take out groups of enemies. So I just slaughtered this flock of birds here. And I still have two missiles left over. So let's take out this bird, because he's going to be annoying with that. And there's some instant death spikes here. And there's one spot down there where you can land that doesn't have spikes. So that's basically the spot where you get lucky if you land on there. And here we are at the end of Sand Zone. That's the warehouse Balrog was talking about. We're not going in there yet. And if you shoot these, you get some uh, missile re life and missile refill thing. And a safe spot. And now let's take the dog back. Unfortunately, since we've killed pretty much all the enemies along the way, the trip back is a lot easier. Um, but we're still going to have to go back through all this one more time. And that's going to be when we go back to that warehouse, because there's a boss fight in there, and it's one of the tougher boss fights in the game. It's one that I always, I always have a lot of trouble with. Oh crap. Um, this is... This is a good time to just run like hell. And most enemy projectiles you can destroy, by the way. I don't know if I ever brought that up before, but you probably saw me doing it once or twice. And... Get some help. You can see there's a dog over there. Um, I think that's actually the next one we're gonna get. But I'm not, I don't remember exactly. So he brought back a dog. You're fast! This is certainly one of my beloved little dogs. By the way, you must be a soldier from the surface. It's been a long time since all those robots just like you came to this island. They were responsible for the deaths of so many defenseless Mimiga. And for the lives of the brave men and women who tried defending the Mimiga. Due to the effects of consuming the forbidden red flower, the cornered Mimiga became utterly rabid. They fought back viciously against the robots that had invaded their land. Who knows? Had there been no red flower, it's very possible the Mimiga on this island might have been annihilated. Three more left. I know you can do it. Yeah, with each dog you bring back, she gives you a little more backstory of the island. So you gotta... It's nice to kind of pay attention to that. Just so you know a little more about what's been going on. Uh, crap. Level 2 Polar Star is crap against these things. I, mean, I took them out pretty easily with level 3. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna get weapon power back right now, actually. Because if you just keep killing the- if you go back inside Jenko's house and come back, these guys respawn. So you can pretty much just farm weapon power off of these guys. Okay, we're good. Now, 
I'm gonna go down and back into this hell zone. Yeah. But we're not gonna go all the way to the end of it this time. We're still gonna stay on these platforms though. And if you destroy those uh, the skull things, but not the birds, they'll start swarming you. So that's another reason to take out the birds first if you can. Which I am completely failing at, but we're already where we need to go. There's paw prints up here. So we're gonna go this way, through the wall. And he went inside. This area is a little annoying. It's probably pretty handy to have the map out because you can see the layout of it in the dark. But you still need to be careful because there's a sand pit there that does have a crocodile in it. So it looks like we're gonna wanna go up here. Maybe? Yes? Okay. And then keep checking. Okay, so we're gonna jump over. Nope, I said jump over. Okay. And then you can sh also do the trick I showed you earlier to like shoot around and see where you can actually hit stuff. And okay, so there's the platform there. And we got the dog. Woof, woof, woof. Yes, I want to bring him along. And oh, jeez. Wow. That was close. You can also stand on these guys, by the way, if you if they haven't eaten you alive. What the heck? Where am I? Okay. Oh god damn it! Come on, there we go. Save because we've cheated death. Even though one crocodile bite isn't really enough to kill you at this point, unless you're doing a one health capsule run, which I think is pretty much insane. Um, I think that's actually what hard mode, it, hard, the hard difficulty is. I think it just only gives you, it doesn't give you any health capsules. So basically you have to complete the whole game with only three health. And the absolute weakest enemy in the game does two damage to you with any given hit. So pretty much everything else is going to one shot you no matter what. And I think that's just insane that anybody could possibly be good enough to do that. But then again, the internet routinely surprises me with how good people are at certain games. I mean, I've seen people actually beating I Wanna Be The Guy, and I think that's just insane too. But anyway, back on topic. Ooh, definitely. That was mine. Gave her the dog. Thank you so much. This one makes three. Have you ever seen an enraged Mimiga? Eating the red flower will make me stronger. A great many of the Mimiga believed this and chose to eat the red flower. Then and only then did they fight back against the battalions of robots. But do you know what happens afterwards to a Mimiga filled with such rage? It was so terrible. Perhaps they couldn't control themselves, while well, most of the Mimiga who consumed the red flower were never seen again. They went missing. I heard a rumor that they supposedly made it down to the surface, where the humans lived. The thought of those enraged Mimiga anywhere close to the surface, with humans, if it's really true, do you yet realize it? God, my voice is just getting all messed up trying to do this. I'm just going to read her normally. Do you realize how dangerous the red flower actually is? Two more pups. Okay. And we're coming up on 20 minutes, so I think... Wait, two more? Um, I'm trying to remember... I may have forgotten where one is, but I hope not. Um, I, kn I know for a fact where one is, because it's the one I always forget about, but I may have forgotten about the other one. Because I know there's one up there, that's the closest one. But... Um, I don't think I'm gonna get it in time to actually... I'm just gonna go ahead and stop this for now here. And we'll pick up finding the dogs in the next part, so I will see you then.